all feelings about leopard print are valid, although valid doesn't always mean automatically correct. It sees the cottage core aesthetic and it's like, hold my beer. <laughs> I know that I'm supposed to look fancy, but I'm not taking this in any way seriously. <laughs> Oh my god, leopard print. Ugly, right? Maybe that's not what you're thinking. Maybe you're thinking, ah, it's a bit tacky. Or maybe just, oh, that looks so cool on other people, but I just couldn't wear that. Or, I literally have no idea how to wear that. All feelings about leopard print are valid, although valid doesn't always mean automatically correct. Leopard print has been polarizing us for decades and I'm here to think too hard about leopard print with you and to show you some ways to wear it. Now this channel likes to panic positively about the climate and one thing we do know is that if we want to survive we're gonna just have to make do with the clothes that already exist and a huge proportion of clothes that I've seen are leopard print. Now leopard print isn't for everybody but it's definitely for more people than we'd think and because so much fabric in the world exists with this pattern on it is not only fun to embrace leopard print it is necessary. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but I'm somebody who absolutely loves leopard print. If you watch this channel for a while, you'll know that I like to strut in the spot, lounge in the leopard, boogie in the big cat. But during lockdown, I got a little bit geeky and I even started reading about the history of leopard print. I love making videos encouraging you to try new things, get out of your comfort zone and find sustainable ways to get yourself excited about the things you put on your body, which are essentially just bits of thread we drape ourselves in to stop us from being arrested for being naked in public. So I'm going to show you some fun ways that I style leopard print to give you some ideas and also pepper in some of the well nerdy facts. <laughs> I learned from this book. And if you're a nervous Nelly and you're worried about wearing leopard print, I know that leopards can't change their spots, but I believe that you can. So just give me a little bit of your time. Open heart, open mind, open ears. Let's go. Welcome to the beginner's round. All ye cubs of the closet. I just want to go gentle on you. No claws out yet. This is going to be very soft. The first way I wear leopard print is as a side dish. Little cheeky hints that don't scream leopard commitment. <laughs> but just maybe some casual dating. Maybe a little meetup over sushi. This can be things like belts, hats, bags. I personally have a really versatile leopard print scarf that I like to tie in my hair, or you can tie it on a bag, or you can even use it as a belt. I have a really cool leopard print collar that I got from an independent creator on Depop. Detachable collars are very versatile anyway and can like wake up loads of different dresses you already have. But particularly the leopard print collar has something very specific about it because it sees the cottage core aesthetic and it's like, hold my beer <laughs> and it just kind of like joyfully perverts the kind of whimsy outdoors on the prairie optimistic vibe and it immediately makes it foreboding jungle laces are another like more unusual accessory you can get in leopard print these ones are just from the doc martin's website and i threaded them into some doc martin's i already had they're really fun and i even have some leopard print on my pop socket <laughs> maybe the obsession is too strong should i calm down now, if you close your eyes and you think the word leopard print, you probably think of the kind of pattern I'm wearing here. <laughs> this is accurately leopard print, but often just because of how long it's been in casual lexicon. That just means conversation, <laughs> language. <laughs> Calm down, English Lena. When we say leopard print, we could actually be referring to any of these patterns. This is a leopard print. This is a jaguar print. This is a cheetah print. This is an ocelot. This is a clouded leopard. This is a bobcat. This is a snow leopard. And this is a black panther. Following, <laughs> nor me. Which is fine. It's good to know. I don't think the big cat's mine. But it's fun to think about the evolutionary side of how all these species evolved to be able to hide in their various different environments. And on a practical level, it means that if you're looking for a very specific print, because you might not like all leopard print, but you might have been drawn to a pattern before and not be able to name it, now you have the words to name it. If you want to search for clothes on secondhand websites in these patterns, you now have words for it. Yay. Leopard print as an accent. This is slightly different to leopard print as a side dish. An accent is more like a really key piece of clothing that is definitely part of your outfit, but also has snuck in at the back entrance and makes your outfit bona fide leopard print. This could be something like a jacket. I have this really cool biker jacket I got from Depop for, how much did I get it for? This is when my hunter instinct comes out. I'm like, yeah, I found it. I got it good, brought it home. By the way, do I need to say in this video that every bit of leopard print I show in the video is 
fake. If you don't know me by now, you will never, ever, ever know me. I obviously don't support the fur industry. This is all secondhand, reused, synthetic fibres, baby. Why did I sound like Moss in the IT crowd then? I am so embarrassed. I cannot tell you. (laughs) £2.70. That is, I'll repeat that if you didn't hear in the back. £2.70. And it's the love of my life. It makes any outfit kind of ambiguously smart casual. If I'm feeling too smart, I'll put this on. But then I'm also, if I'm feeling too slouchy, this elevates it a little bit. Oh my God, I said elevate. Am I a fashion blogger now? This tone of leopard print is also a little bit on the dimmer switch, a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit darker, not so bam, which means you can kind of like subtly incorporate it with more stuff. And also because it's a jacket, you can take it off. If you're feeling a bit self-conscious, you're just working up to the leopard print, you can walk to the party in the leopard print and then take it off when you want to. This would also work with say leopard print sandals or leopard print trainers. That's what I mean when I say leopard print as an accent. I don't know what accent leopards have. I imagine it depends on the leopard. Another way to wear leopard print if you're a nervous leopard print user is leopard print under the wire. And I mean this actually in the type of fabric that you pick. You can find the leopard shapes on a piece of fabric that are the same color, but different textures. I found this is called like Jackwood, Jackwood, um, when I've seen it on the internet, but I think there were other names for it. But essentially you're looking for kind of silky textures that aren't really that leopard print from far away. But when you get closer, you realize that they are leopard print. So this is my silky leopard print shirt. It can look quite bougie and fancy, but this leopard print by any other name would smell as sweet. I really like wearing this under dungarees for a more like, I'm fun, but also serious kind of look. Or you could wear this with like a really fancy skirt or something like that if you were going more dressy. And while you're wearing that leopard print, you can remember that you are in good company. Leopard print has been associated with the luxury market sometimes in history. And it was also a way that Nazi wives during World War II would show off their wealth. However, it seems that a lot of women like to subvert that as well. And I quote, in Poland, there was a teenage Jewish partisan hero called Faye Schlumann, who recovered a leopard print coat while raiding her Nazi occupied home town, then wore it while fighting them, its pattern helping to conceal her during life and death manoeuvres in the snowy woods. It's kind of impressive. Another example is the champion sword fighter, Jagurina. Yes. This is a cabinet card from 1982, and she was promoted as being so skilled that many champion swordsmen feared fighting her at all. This is Wilhelmina, the first female cab driver in New York City. In 1915, the New York Times reported, woman taxi driver invades Broadway, men rivals are friendly. (laughs) And there's a lot of stuff that's really interesting in this book around how our pupils dilate naturally at the sight of prints like this, because there's something embedded in our brains that is signaling danger. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure, but I like this idea of wearing leopard print as a way to label yourself as predator and not prey, or at least something that doesn't go down without a fight. Flipping through all the amazing stories in this book made me realise how many times women have used leopard print to subvert expectations and scare people a little bit. Speaking of history, I love a bit of leopard print as a kind of vintage classic. If you want to go to something fancy, but you don't want to look too fancy, but you do want to make a statement, having like a dress in a really classic cut like this, but then it being in leopard print, just kind of, it's kind of almost sarcastic. That's what I like about it. It's kind of just showing like, I know that I'm supposed to look fancy, but I'm not taking this in any way seriously. Imagine attending the wedding of an ex wearing this. I borrowed this really cool leopard print corduroy shirt um, from On Loan, which is really unusual. And I actually saw some ones on Depop as well. If you type in like frilly collar leopard print, there are loads of different designs. So if you're gonna have a leopard print shirt, you don't just have to have like a boring one like this one. You can go a little bit frilly, a little bit poofy, a little bit extra with it. And you can also wear leopard print up top and then wear one of your favorite circle skirts. That would also make it look a little bit more rockability. Rockabilly? How do you even say that? I never know. I sometimes do that with this dress under this skirt and that looks really cool. Leopard print as a lazy neutral. Now we all know that there's the phrase like leopard print is a neutral, but when you apply that to like the kind of clothes that you have leopard print on, it takes on a different meaning. For example, one of my favorite bits of clothing that you've probably seen a lot in my videos are these leopard print clots. And because clots are a complete, like basically pajamas item of clothing in your wardrobe, you can throw them on with like t-shirts or vests, basically buying leopard 
leopard print in loungewear designs and then wearing them as serious clothes I think can look really understated, really cool, or at least I hope it does because I wear it all the time. So another really interesting story about leopard print is that Jackie Kennedy had two leopard print coats, which there was a myriad of drama around, but essentially she owned two. And not only did that cause a scandal for reasons that I'll leave links to below, there was also a massive stir around the leopard print itself. The first lady wearing a coat like this set off a trend that basically meant that 250,000, yep. Yeah just had to shake that number. But 250,000 leopards were killed in the few short years after she wore those coats. The guy who styled her with those coats was so mortified and irritated and angry and devastated that he cut fur from his repertoire completely, which was massive because he was like a massive designer. His name was Cassini. Because of those coats, he became a massive anti-fur activist. And even though he wrote a whole book on dressing Jackie Kennedy, he never even mentioned those coats in the book. He didn't show pictures of them. He was real mad for the rest of his life. How about styling something that's like leopard print, but feminine on steroids? If you're buying secondhand and you type in pink leopard print, it's a whole other world. Especially if it's a floaty fabric like this skirt I found. It can almost read kind of floral from a distance, especially if you look for patterns that are quite small. I didn't think leopard print could look dainty, but here we are. So if a kind of more feminine, floaty summer vibe is usually what you wear anyway, that's a great way of incorporating it into your style. This approach is what I wanna call leopard on an elevator. Send it up. You can take simple leopard print pieces, but if you wear them with lots of loud, I don't want to say garish. I want to say gumption filled jewelry, especially if it's something warm in tone like gold that can really elevate it and make it look fancy. And you can also pick a leopard print in a kind of more silky texture, which would make it look event appropriate. Is that what the vloggers say? And it can prevent you looking what I guess some people call young or tacky, but asterisk, you're allowed to look young and tacky well. I have some notes on tacky. Okay, I'm gonna read this bit straight from the book because Joe Weldon really goes for the jugular when it comes to tacky and I love it. Tacky is what is too easily accessible to people, either without resources or abusive of the resources they have. Tacky as a concept refers to the lack of cultivation or the resistance to taste. More often than not refers to tastes that are not suitably conservative. That which is elegant can become tacky if it becomes less exclusive and more easily acquired. What one might call the promiscuity factor in fashion, a cheap knockoff of a fancy designer shirt can be called tacky, even if the original was in the best possible taste. And clearly it's in bad taste to riff off of the designer in the first place, but tacky doesn't respect gatekeepers and tacky tries too hard. Furthermore, tacky is likely to be feminine, ethnically diverse, queer, deviant, not manly, not practical, not businesslike, not serious. Tacky, like hell, is always other people. <laughs> I love it when people who clearly are like a little academically minded, but also have a personality write books because <laughs> tacky like hell is always other people. Could be the most perfect sentence in the English language. And she goes on to talk about how this concept of tacky versus good taste, kind of she feels like it's code for having an identity at all. The fun lover, the seductress, the adventurer versus good taste, which just means to blend in. <gasps> so then if we really want to intellectualize what is essentially an arrangement of dark threads and rust threads hanging off a flesh puppet, then we can think more about why we judge things as tacky, especially leopard print. Is it because it's easy to get hold of now? Is it because it's associated with the wild as a threat to the conservative? Is there something a bit ancient about it? Does it not feel modern? What are all these embedded resistances we have to, what should be just a fun thing? And who was the first character we saw in leopard print? Obviously there's the Flintstones. I think the most like character that stands out for me is this slightly unprofessional professional like Joey's agent. That's the kind of like person I remember seeing in leopard print. Obviously there's loads of British soaps that have notorious characters who wear leopard print. And it's always really interesting to think about that and then wonder whether that impacted our love or hate of this Marmite fabric. I have no answers. It's all just very fun to scratch your chin and think about, you know? Anyway, I'll give you another tip now, calm down. Before this turns into a, in this essay, I will. 
<laughs> style event. Okay, I don't know if I just summoned the wilds of Jumanji with my rant, but it's absolutely pissing it down outside now, which is why I had to turn these very warm lights on. And if you hear an ominous rumble from behind me, it's the wind coming through the chimney. <laughs> it's not the ghosts of conservative past to come and restore good taste into my head and beat it into me. <laughs> Let's hope anyway. So with everything we've learned about leopard print, here are some ways to step it up if you're feeling inspired. Leopard print as the main event. This could be just a really loud piece of leopard print clothing, uh, preferably in a brightly colored fabric. So I love these bright green floaty drawstring dungarees, which I actually guess is more cheetah if we're being technical. And also this purple woolly going out dress that I like to tuck into trousers and have like a big purple moment in. You might recognize this dress from my closet clean out video, but when it came to getting rid of it, I realized that the emotional connection was just too strong. So don't judge me, it's still in my possession. I'm still having fun in it as you can see, okay? Another way to wear it would be with literal leopards on. Instead of having a leopard print, having a print of leopards is really fun. And I don't know if this is amping up the leopard print or toning it it down a bit but it definitely can look a lot more sophisticated if it has a black background or light and summery if it has a white background but you do occasionally see these actual leopard leopard print stuff and it's a way to go all out or rein it in depending on the kind of piece you pick if you're ready to step it up to the mark and be a true leopard print connoisseur it's leopard print on leopard print if you're gonna follow a rule i'd say trying to match the size of the leopard prints works you can buy a matching set so you can mix and mash them as well so i've got this top and the clots that are exactly the same print and i can wear them together if i want to feel like i'm having a jumpsuit moment but then i can also mix and match them the leopard print jacket is great for putting over leopard print the leopard print collar works as well if you're trying to do something a little bit kind of messy in an intentional way and also having more than one accent piece or more than one accessory like I mentioned in I think it was the first point having the leopard print laces with the leopard print scarf around your hair or something like that that's still layering the leopard print can be really playful there's an endless amount of combinations and it's a real fun time in summary, being a leopard print lover is not only a way to have some fun, give homes to items of clothing that rightfully should never go out of fashion, let justice be served, but it's also a way for us to re-examine our relationship with nature, what the wild means to us, and our future as animals ourselves. A lot of the actual animals that these prints are inspired by are not doing so well in a real spot. Could do with a hand. One of the types of leopard that's critically endangered is the emu leopard. Wild cheetahs globally, down to less than 7,000 we think. Wild Siberian tigers, about 480. Shit. And if we're gonna see our love of leopard print as a tribute to them, I mean, it wasn't our idea, was it? We've got to start thinking about the history of this really cool print and how that connects more broadly to the planet that we're living on, how we're fucking it up, how we can make it better. So I'm trying to, after reading this book, which if you can't tell by now, I think you should, it was a really fun, like light, but makes you head scratch history read. After reading that, I kind of use every time I wear leopard print for it to be a little mental trigger in my head and be like, oh yeah, we're living in this world that's a bit precarious right now. I should probably look into that. Um, so I have a series all about the climate crisis up there and there's lots of really cool resources in the description as well if you wanna read more about it. Obviously it goes without saying, don't buy actual fur, but also if you are gonna buy leopard print and you are excited to try something new, please try and buy it a second hand. And I'll also leave some links on ways to specifically help big cats below. These strange mashup videos of history and thoughts and messy fashion and planet saving intentions are free to watch but they're made possible by the people in the Gumption Club who tip me per video to make sure that they keep happening. So if you want to thank anyone for this video it's them. If you want to look at becoming one of those people I'll leave the links below. You can join for as little as a dollar per thing and you can also cap it per month. So I make around five six things a month that you can cap it. So if you want to tip me for two or three of them, that's fine too. It's all below and we also have a super fun Facebook group and a Facebook group that's called The Gumption Wardrobe where we switch clothes as well, which is really cool. All of that will be below. More videos on clothes if you're interested in those right here. Thank you so much for watching and letting me make these really weird videos that don't exist, but I want them to. I basically just trying to make videos that I wanna watch that don't seem to exist. So thank you for being in the vicinity of my wavelength. Please share your pictures with me wearing leopard print. I'm at Lena Norms on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, frogs not out. <laughs>